tonight. Wrapping up, the third phase of India's elections came to a close as the final stretch is now in view for all presidential hopefuls. Bolstering bonds. China Xi departs France for Serbia and Hungary as Sino-Europe relations see slow but steady change. Stormy conditions. Trump's legal troubles mount as Stormy Daniels takes the stand, calls for mistrials being dismissed despite obvious infringements. And time to salsa. Cuba's avid dancers aim for record-breaking moves with thousands in the line. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Avadarana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here's Vinuth Varnasuriya. Good evening and you are joining us on World News Tonight. Well, there are a lot of updates to get you through on tonight's rundown. So let's get started with the developments in India's election. The democratic process continues as India wrapped up polling for the third phase of its massive general election after voters turned out across several regions to cast their ballots. Election officials closed up polling stations around 6 p.m., sealing electronic voting machines inside containers with red wax before dispatching them for counting. Yesterday's polling covered 93 seats in 11 states and territories, with Gujarat and Maharashtra in the west and Karnataka in the south accounting for 50 seats. It completed voting for 283 seats of the parliament from 543 elected seats. The vote pits Modi's Bharatiya Janata Party against an alliance of two dozen opposition parties that promised greater affirmative action and more handouts while stressing what they call the need to save democratic institutions. And now some updates on Xi's tour in Europe. After a frank discussion in France where President Emmanuel Macron pressed him on Russia war Ukraine, trade disputes and human rights, China's President Xi Jinping headed to meet more pro-Beijing governments in Serbia and Hungary. Landing in Belgrade late into the night, Xi Jinping was greeted by Serbian President Aleksandar Vucic before being treated to a traditional dance right on the tarmac. A red carpet welcome that highlighted the crucial partnership between Serbia and China. In Belgrade, the streets were adorned with Chinese flags ahead of Xi's arrival as the capital seemed to brim with anticipation and even a sense of pride with Serbia one of only three stops on the Chinese president's European tour. Serbia and China have in recent years forged a deep strategic partnership that's seen Beijing invest heavily in the Balkan country. China has lent Serbia billions of euros for infrastructure development and runs several mines and factories across the country. More trade deals and agreements are expected to be signed during Xi Jinping's visit, which could also serve to reinforce diplomatic ties. Serbia is among the EU's biggest backers of China's Belt and Road Initiative and, together with Hungary, one of the few European countries still sympathetic to Russia. Analysts have noted Xi's choice to visit these two nations as the rest of the bloc seeks to ramp up pressure on Beijing over its ties with Moscow. Well, the situation doesn't seem to see any relief over the Israel-Palestine conflicts as Israeli forces seized the main border crossing between Egypt and southern Gaza, shutting down a vital aid route into the Palestinian enclave that is already on the brink of famine. Aid trucks were seen lined up on the road in Egypt's Rafah on Tuesday after Israel took control of the Palestinian side of the main border crossing. The United Nations and other international aid agencies said the closing of the two crossings into southern Gaza, Rafah and Israeli-controlled Karem Shalom, had virtually cut off the already devastated enclave from outside aid. The seizure of the Rafah crossing, where more than one million displaced Palestinian civilians are holed up, came despite weeks of calls from the U.S. and others for Israel to hold off from a big offensive in Rafah. The crossing was also the only exit point for those needing to leave Gaza for medical treatment unavailable inside the enclave. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres appealed to Israel and Hamas on Tuesday to spare no effort in arriving at a truce deal. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said seizing the crossing was a significant step towards its aim of destroying Hamas's military capabilities. And still on the conflict, the protests across the globe seem to be spreading slowly but surely. British students set up a pro-Palestinian protest encampments on Oxford and Cambridge University's historic campuses in a show of solidarity with their American peers. Well, for more on this, we have other renewable news special correspondent Aruni Adhikari from Nottingham in the UK. Aruni, what's the situation? Just Vinod. 
students had erected dozens of brightly colored tents on the lawns outside the University Museum of Natural History. Standing in front of the camp, some of which were the black, white and green Palestinian flag, the students said they were joining 100 universities across the world to protest Israel's war in Gaza. The footage of protesting between were in stark contrast to the charring scenes from the US over the past couple of weeks. There were no visible police presence at the Oxford protest, however, other protests across the Europe are beginning to turn violent. Back to you, Vinod. Thank you, and that was other Noble News special correspondent Aruni Adhikari from Nottingham in the UK. Also in the UK, we saw some flight fiascos occur. Britain's home officers said border control systems are operational after an outage that it deemed was not a cyber attack, leading to a lengthy queue and chaotic scenes at the airports nationwide. The Home Office said in an email that statement at no point was border security compromised and there is no indication of a malicious cyber activity. Britain's biggest airport Heathrow said all of its border control systems were running as usual and that it expected no issues when operations restart in the morning. London's Stansted Airport also confirmed that outage has been resolved. Long queues built up at British airports after the border force suffered a nationwide technical issue. One traveller described border officials manually processing passport holders. Well, let's take a short commercial break now. More world news on the other side. Welcome back. We continue with updates on Trump's legal troubles. Former President Trump's defense attorney are moving for a mistrial amid the testimony of pornographic actress Tommy Daniels. Defense attorney Todd Blanche, after the court's lunch break, told Judge Juan Mercan that Daniels' testimony was prejudicial. Adult film star Stormy Daniels took the witness stand at Donald Trump's criminal trial on Tuesday. Daniels, whose alleged sexual encounter with Trump is at the heart of his hush money trial, delivered dramatic testimony, telling a New York jury that she tried not to think about the sex while it took place and feared it would become public. Daniels testified that she was invited to Trump's hotel suite at a 2006 celebrity golf tournament where Trump made sexual advances towards her. She said she, quote, blacked out, despite consuming no drugs or alcohol, after Trump prevented her from leaving the room by blocking the door, and woke up on the bed with her clothes off. Her testimony prompted Trump's legal team to ask for a mistrial, arguing that her account included details that inflamed the jury and were irrelevant to the case. But the judge denied that request. According to Daniels, she was determined to keep the incident private, but changed her mind during Trump's 2016 presidential bid, when he faced multiple accusations of sexual misbehavior. I should be out campaigning right now. The 2024 Republican candidate for president says the trial is an attempt to hobble his attempt to win back the White House. Trump faces three other criminal prosecutions and has pleaded not guilty in all of them. Well, while there are setbacks, it doesn't look all cloudy for Trump as his trial in Florida in charges of illegally keeping classified documents after leaving office has been identified and postponed, greatly reducing the odds he will face a jury in either of the two criminal cases against him before the election. Trump has pleaded not guilty to 40 federal counts accusing him of retaining sensitive national security documents at his Mar-a-Lago estate in Florida after leaving office in 2021 and obstructing U.S. government efforts to retrieve them. The former U.S. president was previously set to go to trial on May 20th, but the prosecution and defense had both acknowledged that date would need to be delayed. The judge did not set a new date for the trial, but scheduled pre-trial hearings to run through July 22nd. Trump is seeking to regain the presidency in November's presidential election in a rematch with Joe Biden. He has sought to portray all the legal cases against him as politically motivated, and his lawyers have worked to delay all four criminal cases he faces until after the vote. And on the road to the White House tonight, the House Committee on Small Businesses subpoenaed the Small Business Administration over what it says of a lack of transparency on alleged efforts by Biden administration to funnel resources a key swing state to register voters in a move they say could be unconstitutional. The committee subpoenaed the SBA Chief of Staff Arthur Pleus and his special advisor Tyler Robinson after they are said to have been no-shows at scheduled transcribed interviews with the committee and failed to turn over documents related to a program that is allegedly diverting its resources away from assisting Main Street, 
so it can register Democrat voters in the key swing state of Michigan. The committee says this action represents the first time in history that has been subpoenaed the agency. The coordination between the SBA and Michigan was sparked by 2021 executive order from Biden directing the federal agencies to promote access to voting, which raised concerns from some that administration is used in the government agency to register votes in a swing state that many believe will be one of the states the November election hinges upon. According to the committee, both Plews and Robinson have avoided addressing those concerns voluntarily, which led to the subpoenas. Now on the Ukraine-Russia conflict, a foiled assassination plot leaves tensions high. The Ukrainian Security Service has announced that two officers of the state's security administration, who were allegedly part of a conspiracy to assassinate top government officials and military officials, including President Zelensky himself, were arrested. Russian insiders, Ukraine's secret service, claims were plotting to kill Volodymyr Zelensky. Among those detained were two colonels from the Department of the State Protection of Ukraine, accused of divulging classified information to Russia. The network, whose activities were overseen by the FSB from abroad, included two UDO colonels who leaked secret information to the Russian Federation. Thus, the enemy was actively developing plans to eliminate President Vladimir Zelensky. One of the most important tasks of the FSB agent network was to find officials among the military close to the president who could take the head of state hostage and later kill him. Targets they plan to assassinate also include the head of the SBU and the head of the GUR, Ukraine's military intelligence. According to the SBU, the operatives intended to monitor and relay the movements of their targets to enable precision rocket attacks on their locations, followed by drone strikes to eliminate survivors and erase any evidence of the operation. Now over in Brazil, rescuers rush to evacuate people stranded by devastating floods across the southern Brazilian state of Rio Grande do Sul, with at least 90 dead, thousands left homeless and desperate survivors seeking food and basic supplies. Relatives waited at the shore of the Guaiba River in the state capital of Porto Alegre to find their loved ones on the boats that brought rescued people from flood-hit areas. The flooding has made rescue efforts even tougher, with dozens of people still waiting to be evacuated by boat or helicopter from rain-stricken homes. The downpour that began last week has caused rivers to flood, inundating whole towns, destroying roads, bridges and airports. Now the rain is forecast to let up on Thursday, but then will continue through the weekend. In Porto Alegre, a city of 1.3 million inhabitants, downtown streets were underwater after the Guaiba River breached its banks with record water levels. Civil defense authorities say the floods have also impacted water and electricity services, with more than 1.4 million affected overall. The more flight problems now as Boeing cargo plane crash landed on its nose after its front landing gear failed. The 767 aircraft, which belonged to the U.S. mail service FedEx, was traveling from Paris to Istanbul and sent sparks flying as it nosedived on the runway. It only made a second effort at landing, pecking into the runway with its nose. Turkey's Minister of Infrastructure and Transportation stated that one was hurt and that the crew had safely departed the plane. He said that while the aircraft was being removed, the runway where the plane had landed was closed. Well, let's go in for a short commercial break now. More world news right after this. Welcome back. Well, hundreds of Cubans gathered on Havana's iconic Malecon to set the record for the most people dancing salsa in Rueda de Casino style and the most simulatious Rueda de Casino circles to be celebrated in Cuba's National Day of Sun Music. Dancers filled the streets near Malecon to perform and sway to the music the best they could for 10 minutes while onlookers watched the bemusement. The organizers said the goal of the event is to establish centers of sun, a genre of music and dance that originated in Cuba in all the provinces and to safeguard Cuban culture assets such as the sun music and the casino round dance. Well, that is all the stories we had to report to you tonight on World News. We'll tune in again tomorrow for more key updates from across the globe. Until then, thank you and have a good night.